On today's show, printing your own mini, collect your favorite Star Trek dog, someone is leaving the Star Trek Online dev team, computer, begin program. Welcome to Com Relay 47, your weekly transmission of all the latest Star Trek gaming news. I'm James, and with me today to briefly discuss these new developments in the world of Star Trek gaming is Tony. Thank you, James. In Star Trek Timelines news, this week's Galaxy event is Barking on the Bridge and features a few of those lovable Trek canines. Princess Thalia and Runa from the Star Trek Strange New Worlds fantasy episode, The Elysium Kingdom, Kella Tarana, which I believe is from an Enterprise episode, and Camping Archer and Porthos will be the featured reward characters. Timelines has also added a new collection to the game focusing on crew members with the athlete trait called the Faster, Higher, Stronger collection. James, are you, uh, you going to hop into Timelines and, and do these events? All I'm going to say is, I love Runa! Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Are you going to try and get some of that these? That was such a great episode. <laughs> I love um, I, not, 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 not so much. I, you know, it's been a while since I've played uh, timelines. Um, you know, I've been playing the Badgy Directive uh, Lower Decks game, so I haven't had too much time for timelines. So I probably, I probably won't jump into this one. Uh, well, you know, it, I, I love Runa. She's just so cool. Looking for some minifigures to add to your Star Trek Adventures RPG game, but don't want to go to the store or wait for shipping. Well, if you've got a 3D printer just sitting around, now you can purchase 3D files for minifigures right from Mordophia's website to print at home. Select your favorite from a collection of TOS Starfleet personnel or TNG Klingon warriors. Download the files and start printing. Individual figures or an entire collection are available. So are you going to be printing these out on a 3D printer, Mr. Tony? Um... I don't know if I'm going to grab any of these ones. If they had TNG Starfleet figures, I probably would definitely uh, pick them up. They're only, the individual file, figure files are only about, you know, five and a half dollars US a piece. Um, so that's not terrible if you just want one specific figure. You know, you got to really know what you're doing with 3D printing to get a good print. Um, but I, I'll probably grab one at some point just to test it out and see how good it comes out. Awesome. I just wish I had a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was about to ask, what about you? And then I realized, I don't think, I don't think he has a 3D printer. <laughs> I wish I did. If you're my age or older, you probably spent some time at your local comic book store in the mid-90s playing customizable card games with your friends. Shortly after that Magic the Gathering game came out, Decipher released a Star Trek CCG. The game was published from 1994 to around 2007 and featured two editions of the game and a 2-4 player game based on Tribbles. After the game was shut down, a committee of players was formed to continue releasing virtual digital expansions that players could print off and sleeve with existing cards to add to their game. For nearly 15 years now, this continuing committee has regularly released expansions, hosted regional and world events, and even streamlined the gameplay to make the game more accessible to new players. Well, if you're keeping up with the game, check out the latest card errata posts on their website at trekcc.org. The November 2022 first edition and second edition errata and gameplay changes are up. And if you're interested in picking up the game again, or if you want to try it for the first time, there is even a virtual tabletop option available using a program called Lackey. James, I don't know if you're old enough, but did you, did you ever hear of this game or remember this game at all? I have never heard of this game before. You youngin? I'm, I'm a, I am a youngin, yeah. Well, you know what? Some, some, some of us have to be... There needs to be an next generation. Get it? Because Star Trek next generation. Uh, 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 no, I. I ba -dum -boom. Ba -dum -dum be sure to tip your waiters. 
<laughs> but yeah, no, I actually really want to play this game. I love card games, uh, so this sounds really awesome. I might actually have to do a stream uh, of the Lackey program. That sounds really cool. Yeah, it's uh, it, this game is really awesome. And, you know, when it first came out, it was the first edition of the game was really clunky. But it, it was very thematic. You have, you know, each player brings six mission cards. You create a space line. Uh, and then you have a star base or a, or a, an outpost, and you report personnel and ships and equipment to your to your thing. And then you have event cards and interrupt cards and objective cards. And you basically gather up a crew. You beam them to a ship. You travel around the space line trying to complete missions. And your opponent has seated dilemma cards underneath that your that your crew have to go up against and. You check their values against the requirements and, uh, you know, you use card abilities and different strategies and synergies to, you know, to make your deck work better than the others. And it's it's a really cool game. And um, the first edition is a very thematic game. And then the second edition is less thematic, but it's still uh, it's a more streamlined card game. And it's amazing that they've kept this game going for so long. And I've actually gone to a couple of, of events recently. I went to one earlier this year uh, where we drafted a bunch of packs and built our own decks and played. And um, there's another one coming up in, in another month or so. And actually, I've talked to uh, the lead rules uh, um, person on the game. And he's uh, he's going to sit down and do an interview with me at some point. So... Um, hopefully we'll have that available for our uh, our listeners uh, sometime That'd soon. That would be amazing. I mean, uh, if, if you can tell us how to play, I'd love to learn. Yeah, maybe we'll do a uh, maybe we'll do a video or something where you and I can hop on and uh, and I can sort of teach you teach you a little bit of how to play the game. Nice. For more than a month after its worldwide release, Star Trek Lower Decks: The Badgy Directive mobile game gets a pretty big update. The update comes with a long list of bug fixes, along with many graphic and quality of life improvements. And for those of you waiting for cloud saving, the team promises that feature is coming soon. So, are you excited for this update to Badgie Collective? Because you said you were playing it quite a bit recently. They, um, they just did a lot of bug fixes. I mean, this is the first, like, real bug fix update since the game released um they fixed a lot of things where you know currencies weren't being um used they fixed a lot of things where currencies weren't being used correctly um, or taken out or where people certain people could like hack and get entered into the event um before it was supposed to start and you know just just some other oh yeah so and some people were able to hack and get into the event earlier than it was supposed to start so they got an unfair advantage so they just did a lot of like quality of life improvements and bug fixes and then they also did some graphical updates they just made some buttons easier to find more clear um you know you know animations that that were more appropriate for what it was what what they wanted to uh, communicate and um and yeah they even talked about some features that they're going to be adding soon including the cloud saving so if you play on one device it'll save it to your or, uh, you know, your like App Store account or whatever. And then if you download it on another device, you can continue playing from where you left off on the previous one. So, yeah. So some exciting stuff. It's um, it's a fun game right now. I might have to pick it up, actually. Uh, the one thing that was putting me off Badgy Directive was the fact that you had to keep re-downloading it. So now that it's got the save feature, I might actually have to pick it up. Well, they haven't released it yet, but it will be out soon, they said. Part 3 of the exciting Deep Space Nine update in Star Trek Fleet Command has rolled out. In this update, players can get the Defiant as a new ship. They can also get new officers, including Wayun, and 30 brand new missions, along with much, much more. Check out the latest blog detailing the update in the description below. You know, I haven't played Fleet Command for a while, but this is really tempting me to come back. I may hop in just to check out some of these new missions um have you have you gotten into fleet command at all not yet um it's one of those games that i am well, my father-in-law sarah's father actually has it is like a super high level in the game so it keeps putting me off because i'm like if i go in i'm just gonna get killed and i don't want to die but i I, sh I should play it I, but the problem is i don't have that much space on my phone uh because i've got quite an old phone now uh so i think once i get my new uh new phone in a couple of months time i will 
I will start downloading all the Trek games to make sure I've got them all. Actually, you, I believe you can play it on PC. Oh, you can? Oh, I might I'm pretty sure you can. I think they released it on PC. Uh, okay. I know timelines. I know timelines you can play on, on Steam. Yes. And I think... I think you can download Fleet Command because I think I even I think I even beta tested it on PC oh. before it was released. I'll tell you what, I might have to do a, a stream on Accolade Hunter of me starting my first Fleet Command. <laughs> and, and don't worry, there's level restrictions on who can attack you. Oh, like okay. it's within a certain number of levels. And the way that the map is, like you, it kind of encourages you to move away from certain areas as you level up. So you kind of naturally progress away from the starting area and uh, and get out to where there's other ones. But you know, you just gotta you gotta keep those shields up all the time when you're not <laughs> playing the game. You just keep keep those base shields up so nobody attacks you while you're away. That sounds like a good idea to me. If you missed the Priority One Armada live stream this past Saturday, we talked about the latest patch notes for PC in Star Trek Online. Among the updates were some fixes to the Valdrez Command Strike Win Escort and the Jem'Hadar Gunboat Hangar Pets. They also resolved an issue with the Space Trait. Infiltrator, not stacking properly, click the blog link, or better yet, watch episode 240 of the Priority One Armada live stream for more discussion. I kept thinking, I've already read this before. I've read these patch notes. It's like I was on the show yes. reading these. Yeah, yeah. We were on the show this past week. So what you guys? would you guys think of these? Uh, I mean, it wasn't a lot of stuff, but um, at least they fixed some annoying things about uh, a couple of the ships and, and how, how, you, uh, how you can acquire the gunboat hangar pets. I mean, I, I, I'm actually quite happy about this. I mean, I, know, I saw what they said about the... Um, they also, there was also something about sh shrinking some size as well. I think it was on a patch a little while ago as well which sound pretty good. I mean, I think there was one from all the patches they did, I think there was one thing that actually really helped, but I don't think any of these ones particularly affected me. What about you? Did they affect you at all? Um, the gunboat might affect me um, because I have the Vanguard bundle pack, the Gemidar Vanguard bundle pack, but I think if I had that, I had access to the gunboats anyway, so I think this is for people who only get, like, one of the ships as as opposed to, like, having the whole collection. I think now if you just have one of the ships, you have access to the gunboat hangar pits as opposed to, I think, previously you needed, you needed like, three of them or something. I forget, but... Um, um, but yeah, I mean, and I, you know, the infiltrator trait, I might even have on, um, on a few characters. So, uh, that probably did help me a little bit. Nice. During Ambassador Kell's weekly 10 forward live stream, the ship design team and system team revealed the newest Infinity promo ship, the Praetor Command Warbird. First seen in episode 10 of the first season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, this new ship will be available sometime in the near future in the Infinity lockbox. For more details, watch a recording of the 10 forward live stream linked below. Did you have a chance to uh, catch the live stream and see this new ship? I, I got linked to it by Mark, or one of our members. He's, he always sends me screenshots because for some reason he can stay up to the, the hour that it's it's streaming. I, I unfortunately always hit the bed. Um, I'm always in bed by the time they are they are doing 10 forward, so I do always miss it. Uh, but I have seen some of the screenshots of this, and it does look very pretty. It's a very cool-looking ship. Um, uh, you know, I mean... I, I to be it's a it's a cool looking ship to be honest I don't like it that much <laughs> personally for me I I don't know what it is but it's I think it's cuz it's too curved like it's just it, it it's I mean it's cool it looks like it's like a bird about to attack like a rat or something you know but for whatever reason I just don't think it looks good as a spaceship I mean but, but it's, it's, it's a bird of prey it's a, it's a bird of prey you know I know, I know. It's on paper. It, on paper, it sounds amazing, but when you actually look at it, I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> Jeremy Bordicus Randall announced on Twitter that he is moving away from Star Trek Online to be on a different development team within Cryptic. He isn't able to talk about what he's going to be working on, but he did say that he can't wait to start sharing his thoughts and the hype about what he's doing with his new team. So, what's he going to do? Well, I'll tell you what I hope it is. And I have no, I have absolutely zero information or uh, 
I this I I this is a hundred percent pure Tony wishing. Okay, you wishing, know, Tony wishing, putting wishing this alert, out in the wishing world. Alert, wishing alert. This is this is the wishing. This is the wishing part of me. Is I hope that they are working on a Transformers MMO. Oh, okay. And the only reason why I I have a feeling that that could be it is because um uh the the Transformers team have sort of hinted at there being an MMO in development and not really talking about it. And the other thing is that um, Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast, which owns Magic. And Cryptic recently did the Magic MMO that that they then didn't release. So it makes sense to me that Hasbro might go the same direction and say, okay, well, we don't want the Magic one, but here's what we do want. We want you to make us a Transformers MMO. Because that, that to me, is more in the wheelhouse of what they do with Star Trek, Champions, Neverwinter. Like, oh, and Neverwinter is D&D, which is also owned by Wizards of the Coast, which is also owned by Hasbro. So there's already this relationship going on between Hasbro and Cryptic in this roundabout way. And so I I honestly believe that it's it's, there's a... There's a a higher than zero percent chance <laughs> that that Cryptic could be developing a Transformers MMO, and I would be super excited about it. Why do, why do I have a strange feeling that y- you spend all your time like just having a board, like right, right? Jeremy Randall is leaving, so let me let me just put you have all these pictures up on your board, and you're you gonna put the meme, and you, you gotta put the meme yeah, up yeah. with the with what's his name doing the thing. Well, it's just it's all in my head because I do the <laughs> I do the thing where it's like it's like okay, well, there's this and this and this. Oh my god, I think it's a Transformers MMO. Yay! Okay, I okay. mean, I am, but that's part of me is like is like the one thing missing in my life is a transformers mmo like i like they keep releasing games that i'm like yeah this is pretty cool but what i really want is a transformers mmo and i'll tell you there's actually you know a picture behind me uh you can't really see it but it's this picture right here and it's a picture of me standing next to a transformer i created at new york comic con 10 years ago wow okay and it was from it was from a proposed transformers mmo that never released Oh, that's and really cool. so for the last 10 years, I've been like waiting for this game to come out and they still haven't made it yet. And there's been rumors and this and that and the other thing. And so I'm just like, you know, so every time every, you know, it's not just cryptic. Every time there's a rumor of like, oh, this company is developing a new MMO. I'm like, I hope it's a Transformers MMO. <laughs> Please let it be a Transformers MMO. Is it a Transformers MMO? Oh, oh I really hope it's a Transformers MMO. Give me, please, 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 please be a Transformers MMO. <laughs> is, is it bad? Now I just want it to be, I want you to be right so you can be happy. I know. Well, thank you. See, the more I do this, the more it gets out into the universe and all that energy will eventually seep into an executive at Hasbro and then the decision will be made. And then you'll be happy forever. Yeah. And I'll take absolute credit. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> that's it for this week's com relay 47 don't forget to like the video and comment below with your thoughts follow us on twitter at p1 armada that's p the number one armada on twitter and on tiktok check out our website www.priority1armada.com for more information about our star trek online in-game fleets and join us every saturday for the Priority One Armada live stream, where we go more in depth on this week's Star Trek Online news and take you, the viewers, on the away mission to earn in game loot. Viewers can also win real loot by entering our giveaways during each live stream. That's every Saturday at 9 pm Eastern on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And every Thursday, we live stream TFO Thursday with the Priority One Armada. Armada members can team up together to earn marks, XP, and lithium. Check the in-game fleet events tab for details and starting times. You can also join James every Monday for Accolade Hunter, a show where we hunt down those pesky and hard-to-find accolades in Star Trek Online, work on a viewer-chosen gear build, or talk all things Trek with surprise guests. Stream times may vary, so make sure you're subscribed, following, and keeping an eye on our social media channels for showtimes. If that's not enough Star Trek Online gaming entertainment, then join us every Friday night at 7pm Eastern for our newest show, Star Trek Adventures Sovereign. 
Trek along with the crew of the USS Sovereign in a Star Trek Adventures RPG live play. Your favorite Pirate to Armada host roleplay their own character creations, exploring strange new worlds, seeking out new life and new civilizations, and boldly going where the dice rolls take them. Streaming live every Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And thank you to our Patreon supporters for helping to make all these Priority One Armada shows and streams possible. Wiley Coyote, Prince1983, Teacher Guy, Amerigen, Tazan, Asar, Four, Seal, Karabak, B Film Fan, Go Jinx, Miller, Shigura, Eric Allen, Cat, Victor Vall, Astro, Gojira, Quicksilver, and our newest patrons this month, Mufasa and Sayar. Thank you, guys. If you want to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on all the latest Star Trek gaming news. That's all for Tony and me, Cobb Relay 47, out.